The old BMW 3 Series remained at the top of its class right until the end of its life, so it stands to reason that this new and improved version should be absolutely brilliant. And with that in mind, I'm going to flip this car bar review on its head and start by talking about the negatives first. For starters, the four-cylinder diesel rattles like a tractor at idle. The large transmission tunnel means the 3 Series is not very good for carrying three rear passengers regularly. Also, you have to pay extra if you want the added practicality of fold-down rear seats. And on UK cars, the pedals are offset to the right, which is a bit annoying. Undoubtedly, the biggest problem with this car is its high price, but hey, it's a BMW, what do you expect? And after all, it's a desirable motor that will hold its value well come resale time, and that rather neatly brings me on to the part of the review where I talk about the 3 Series' good points, and you have to bear with me because it's going to take a while because well, there's quite a lot of them. BMW makes some of the best engines in the entire world, and the 2-litre diesel in this car is an absolute cracker. It can return 62 miles per gallon, which well, is impressive enough on its own, yet it's still got enough oomph to propel this car from 0 to 62 in just 7.5 seconds. You can even alter the throttle response by pressing this button down here. Now that system, it's called the Dynamic Drive Control, and it also alters the steering weight as well. It's standard across all cars and allows you to alter the car's character depending on your mood. My only problem is that I'm constantly fiddling with it because I can never quite decide what mood I'm in. One of the best things about the 3 Series has always been its brilliant rear-wheel drive chassis, and this new car completely lives up to the legend. I mean, it handles brilliantly on a twisty road such as this. In fact, it can humble some sports cars. Now, some of the more hardcore driving enthusiasts among you might be a bit concerned to find out that it now uses an electric power steering system rather than a traditional hydraulic one. But, you know what? Do not worry at all because it feels just as sharp as you'd expect from a 3 Series. Plus, it's more efficient and lighter to use in town. However, for me, the most impressive thing about this new car is that while it's still as fun to drive as its predecessor, it's actually more comfortable. The cabin is better insulated from outside noise, but the big difference is that the suspension is more comfortable. It deals better with bumps in the road. It's especially good if you go for the optional adjustable dampers, or they'll be worn because they do cost £750. As for other options, well, there's absolutely loads of them to help separate you from your hard-earned cash, including internet connectivity, a hard drive for all your music and even an SOS system which you can use to make an emergency call. In terms of standard equipment, well, all cars get Bluetooth, mobile phone connectivity, climate control and BMW's iDrive system which lets you control the car's functions using this swivel wheel and handy colour screen, though the standard one isn't quite as big as that large one there. As for the rest of the cabin, quality is even better than before, with soft touch materials which extend from the dash down the side of the centre console. And don't worry if you don't like the red metal trim, as there are a range of interior designs to choose from. Practicality is decent too, with plenty of adjustment in the driving position, and there's also sufficient storage space for all your bits and pieces. The new 3 Series is more spacious inside than the old car, thanks to a slightly longer wheelbase, and as a result, you've got plenty of knee room, and even if I'm sitting up straight, there's more headroom than before. I mean, if I was in the old car, my head would be touching the roof, and it's not quite here. Also, the boot is bigger than before, and is now on a par with that of its main rivals. What's more, the shape is squarer, which helps aid practicality. Well, there you have it. Like I said at the very beginning of this review, the new 3 Series is better than its predecessor, and so is a worthy successor to the compact executive car crown. So then, the king is dead. Long live the king.